finally home. Sometimes the new is actually the old. And look what has come to the Black Cloud Battalion's hangar. It is my new old uh, barn find AE86, my 1985 Corolla GTS hatch. That's the car that everyone talks about. That's the one that everyone dreams about. And that's also the one that everyone kind of forgot about when they were really cheap and affordable. I ended up getting one. And the, this one I had actually come across in a very interesting way. It is a true barn find. This car actually came to me when an old friend of mine from high school calls me up. He said, Yo T, I think I got a car that you might be interested in. And my friend, he's actually into uh, BMWs and stuff like that. So he didn't really know the car and he didn't really like, uh, he wasn't interested in getting it himself. And he said, man, I know you're into those Japanese cars. I think you might be interested in this one. So what he did was he sent me a little photo and the photo I could barely make out. It was just like the front of the grill and the front bumper. That in itself, I was like, oh, I can tell that right there is a Corolla of some form. I can't quite tell for sure if it's a hatch or a, a, a coupe, but it's definitely an 8.6, so let me take a look at it. He said, yeah, this uh, old lady, uh, her husband died and he had this old car in the basement and you might be interested in it. I said, bet, I'll be right there. Next thing you know, I run down to this pretty uh, affluent part of, of North Georgia and there just so happens that this incredible neighborhood I've come inside where it's filled with mansions and, and different uh, affluent types of houses this house I pulled up to was a really, really, really nice house. And it had this car in there. So when I pull up there, and he opens the garage, it's a two car garage, and one side had a 67 Mustang. Uh, not fastback for anybody who was really wanting one. It's just a regular coupe body, but it was clean, like ultra clean. But to the side of it, to the actual side of the uh, Mustang, was like a wall and the wall had the first thing I saw was strangely as this was was a poster and it was a poster of an exploded view of a AE86 Corolla hatch I said whoa what is that poster all about and as I'm looking at the poster I start to peek around the other side on the other side I start to see all these boxes and all these different things on top of this dusty Corolla, clearly it was a GTS hatch. So there she is. I said, oh my goodness, do you see this thing? In my own head, because I don't want to give that up to everyone around who was in earshot of what I was thinking. Fortunately for me, the old lady was a beautiful lady. She was, she was incredible. Uh, she happened to be a, a sergeant in a police force, but you know, she, she, she was some type of higher up. And she was, you know, maybe lightly, dis well, clearly she was distraught about her husband. Come to find out, she explains to me that this car was her husband's dream car to build. I said, uh, you got a 67 Mustang, that's the dream car? She's like, yes. He collected parts and, um, you know, brochures and manuals and everything you possibly could for an 85 GTS hatch, GTS specific, because he actually printed out numerous pages. He, I have four four ring binders filled with detailed assembly and, and torque specs and everything you could name, part numbers, all that came with the car. The unfortunate thing was the man had passed away from cancer. He was only 55. Um, I was surprised that a 55 year old man was into Corolla hatches. And you know, this is normally something you see with uh, old Asian men or something like that maybe, but he wasn't an Asian man, he was a white man and he was, he was uh, 
he was uh, an affluent guy. I think what happened, and the way that she explained it to me was how he came across it was, I guess he was in the market to find one, but never actually came across a true GTS hatch and was driving one day down the highway in, uh, in Atlanta, well, uh, North Atlanta, essentially, and there was a guy, an old, uh, an old Latino man driving this car, and that car, he flagged him down, and when he caught up to the guy, he said, look, have you done anything to this car, anything at all, and the man just said, I only drive it, I drive it to and from work, nothing special about this car, it's just a Corolla, which is what a lot of people think at the time when these things were popular. Uh, so what happened was he said, hey, let, do you think you would sell it? Would you sell it to me? And the guy said, yes, I'd sell it. And he bought it. He actually got it home. The motor failed uh, a little bit while he was working on it. He, I don't think that his particular skill set was automotive work. So he, definitely, he was a, uh, an engineer by trade. Clearly a very good one, too, if you had saw the stuff I had seen. And at the end of the day, like he said, okay, when I get to this, I'm going to collect all the parts that I could possibly collect for it and stack them up and get them ready for when I finally do make the full plunge and put it together. And that day never came. Unfortunately, that day never came. But the beauty of it all is, is that I was able to save the car. The lady gave it to me for a song. It's almost like the old days of the original shop that I used to be a part of called Garage Zero here in Atlanta. Classic Japanese cars, even though I was the only classic American guy there. Uh, I always used to tell the guys, especially my brother John from Garage Zero, I used to tell him, you know, he used to get all these Corolla hatches for nothing. He would just get them and just slide them and destroy them. And I'm in there with vengeance, you know, I'm in there with my 67 Camaro. And I used to tell him, I said, man, why don't you get one and just keep it off to the side? Well, you know, we had space. We had a lot of space at the shop. So I said, just grab one, man. Just grab one of these. That, they're badass. I didn't like them particularly at the time. Uh, you know, and this is, this is what, maybe 13 years ago, something like that. And we had just started the shop, and I said, man, why don't you grab one and put it off to the side? And I wasn't even into classic Japanese cars at all. Uh, I didn't even own any classic Japanese cars. It was that shop that got me to fall in love with these 240Zs, with these old Celicas, and eventually with these. He never, ever heeded what I said. He didn't listen. Uh, he always used to say to me, he's like, Ah, I could get one of those for $300. I know one behind a lady's house. I used to, let's go get it, man. Let's just go get it. Come on, like, let's just go get it, and let's just put it back. We got plenty of space. Let's put it in the corner. Never did. Guess what happened? The value of them started to go up. The amount of them started to go down. Guys would just get them, destroy them, cobblestone them back together, and destroy the cobblestoned version. It was really kind of myopic. It was really kind of short-sighted. And I guess the best thing about me having this one was the fact that I wasn't emotionally attached to these like they were. I wasn't, I never seen Initial D. I never watched that TV show or the cartoon. Uh, I still haven't. Uh, I respect it. I like car-based uh, 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 animes and stuff like that, I think that's great, but I think I got a little too old before I got into the world of, of anime and car involvement. Uh, I was too busy driving the car and talking to girls. So, this ended up being almost like a strange custodial nature for me, in a sense, because I don't plan to modify it. I actually plan to restore it. This is probably the only car that I've ever owned or ever, well, maybe ever will own that I just want to keep it stock. Uh, I, as you guys have seen, I have plenty of cars and every single one of them is modified with my touch. But this one, it's going to stay pretty much like this, but new. 
And the reason for it, I can go into in a little bit, is, is very important why, because this particular car is living in a world where all of these are modified. All of them are wrecked, all of them are damaged, all of them are rust buckets, they were not cared for. Now this one wasn't cared for, but it was cared for in the sense that it's definitely a great candidate for a restoration. And all of the moving parts that are on it, all of everything's there, it has stuff on it that most of my friends would just throw away. I am not throwing it away. I'm actually gonna bring it back to life and I'm gonna keep it almost just like it was, fresh out of the factory. And you know, come with me to see what's gonna happen with that because she's on the plate now. I'm gonna find out what this 8-6 life is about. I'm gonna do a bit of a deep dive to find out more of the things that all these guys know way more than I do. I know a little bit, but not that much. So we're gonna find out. Watch this, come with me. 8-6 time, y'all. barn fine fashion she's still covered in soot still covered in dust soot you can even see it still on the windshield it's literally still dirty fresh out of the barn or fresh out of the garage really I really just I'm gonna start out with cleaning her up and I'm gonna start assessing on what exactly put her on her heels in the first place. So, as you can see, my, my sons, they love tagging, and here they go in the dust. We're gonna go ahead and make some more, uh, some more uh, tag space. So, they did that. Overall, she's literally been rolled out, and it's got a bunch of parts with it. And what I have, like for example, like this side here, this is a smashed uh, rear window, but the other window, they have a brand new one sitting in the back seat. Uh, I've never taken out a, G a uh, hatch window on these and stuff like that, so I'm gonna have to find out what the proper protocol is to take out the, uh, the window, I mean, and replace the trim, but that's pretty straightforward. I, it came with like, like eight rear view mirrors. <laughs> little side mirrors. It had so many side mirrors, I was like, geez, man, you'll be able to see all around the car. Like, you can see under the car, over the car. Uh, the front area is pretty much still really good. Like, the grill is all there. The hood is pretty straight. It closes. The, 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 the hood hinges are a bit stuck, but I already uh, got an idea of uh, start loosening those up. Uh, I've got this side open because the door is actually, I think someone tried to like work on the lock and the lock itself is a bit, uh, is a bit jank. So I'm gonna figure out what to do about that. I actually have, and, and here's the thing, uh, he stacked so many parts. Some of the things that he kept, <clears throat> that he saved for it is a door. He saved a door, he saved a hood, th three bumpers, two fronts and one rear, multiple tail lights, multiple uh, uh, door handles, even a GTS, uh, excuse me, a uh, 4AG head sitting over there on the, uh, the uh, rack. And I think he was probably thinking that he was gonna change those things out because maybe they weren't perfect, but some of these are kinda already pretty good. Uh, this tail light's got a, a crack in the end over here like that, you know, but overall, pretty solid it's got the stock wings it's got things on the car that like I've never seen before like these particular covers that are on the door locks and stuff like that really strange stuff and you can't really see it well in here but like on the windshield it's got like a Toyota like kind of like really 80s looking like Toyota upper window banner it was pretty nice other than that I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I'm wondering just how much I gotta do to get it onto the road. I'm pretty sure I gotta get it up onto my rack and then get underneath and see just how 
just how good it looks underneath. So, yeah, hold on a second, you'll see. Here's one of the coolest parts of this car. I can't believe how stock this thing still is. It still has the plastic intake right here. Not broken, cracked at all. It still has all the reservoirs, even the ones in the back, windshield uh, 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 reservoirs for, for the spray nozzles. It's literally stock. Like every single piece is pretty much all there. That's something you don't see anymore. You don't see these things kept this way. Most of the time, especially when I was with my homeboys from Garage Zero, they would yank these pieces off and pitch them in the garbage. Now you can't even find them anymore. It's really, really strange to see it like this because I've always seen it in another way. It's always been a fairly empty looking engine bay. Like some of that, most of that stuff was all gone. And now with this being here, I'm really getting a little bit of a, of, a, of a strange journey into a world where I never knew it was like how it was supposed to be. So I'm pretty much just absolutely shocked on how stock it is under here. I'm wondering just how much I have to dig into it to find out what was wrong with it. But for the most part, the best thing is that it has all the things so I can put it back together. So it's not gonna be so, so bad. At least I don't think it will. <laughs> part that actually shocks the people the most it seems the interior one thing that's really crazy about this interior is that it's actually pretty darn pristine absolutely complete the wildest thing is it has a crackless dash check this out <laughs> I'm not the one
even got this weird balloon thing here. Not something, not something that I'm normally used to. Man, if these seats aren't super comfortable, they're so, so comfortable. The back seat, I haven't actually took the stuff out of it. It's pretty, pretty nice. So you see how this seat is right here? That's the passenger seat and it's, it's pretty decent. Like I just have a bunch of extra parts back there. The back seat has that rear window, that rear hatch window. And it also has an extra seat, an actual extra seat back. Like it's got the um, it's got the back part and also the buns where you sit down. And over there is the carpet. It's even got extra carpet. So literally it has all the stuff to put back together. So other than that, I've got a little bit of like stainage right here of, uh, of the, the uh, sunroof. And that's probably the worst looking thing in here. But everything else is still pretty much there. I don't have a rear view mirror. I don't have a rear view mirror right here, and I don't have a, a little uh, 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 sun visor on this side. But I think I actually have it over there. Now that I think about it, so yeah, yeah. Can you believe it? No cracks on the dash. How often do you see that? Oh, it is missing a door panel on it right now. But the door panel is actually over there. So. <laughs> it's got it's got pretty much everything yeah 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 come on I think it cleaned up pretty good don't you think that was just a quick hose off all that dust and soot was pretty thick on there and uh, looks to me that hmm, it's actually not bad at all. That silver still looks really good, better than I thought it would be. What do you think? Hmm? <laughs> Don't think I should just keep driving it like that? Check it out. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad at all if you ask me. So yeah, now that I've got her kind of washed off, I might, I might wash her a little bit more thorough, but uh, for now I'm just gonna let some of this kind of like overcast and a little bit of drizzle uh, come and put a little bit more break up in the, in, the, in the dirt. Then I might give it a good once over and then pull her inside and then get her up on my rack. But until then, yeah. <laughs>